Well, it's 6.15 in the morning, and we are about to check into this Freeman, we're at the Freeman Marston Yard here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're supposed to be here at 7. It's uh, 6.15, I don't even think they're opening it, but I want to give you guys a little video, start my video on the trip out to Vegas. We, uh, the clip y'all are fixing to watch, I just wanted to clear up that um, the speed limit in Chattanooga was 55 and I was doing 55 so some of these keyboard warriors are gonna say oh my god he was flying through Chattanooga well no I was I was doing the speed limit there's 55 and I was doing 55 so I usually try to run the speed limit or below but anyway there's what the old girl looks like it's semi dark out here you know this camera right here does a really good job in low light so, uh, there she is. What do y'all think? So once I get to them seven lights up there on that top rail, that trailer, it'll be a nice little step transition. You know, seven here, seven there, and seven up there. It'll be like boom, 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 you know? But yeah, got the old girl washed again um, in uh, Vegas yesterday. And then spent all day at the TA yesterday doing a rendering video, which we're fixing to release to you guys here just in a moment. So we're just here hanging out, waiting for these guys to open, fixing to call the broker and let them know. So I think there's like 20 different people in an office, and every one of them has, every one of them has um, emailed me. Are you on time? You gonna make it? Uh, you know, blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah. Get off my back. Anyway, we're just rambling. Something over there. Squeaky train. Messing up my video train. Alright, so. It's a long ways to walk back here. Get this thing in frame. But anyway, there's that. And, uh, I gotta add some more anti sail brackets to these trailer mud flaps. I gotta get the ones that go around the edges. Uh, straighten it up a little bit. So. Which are not bad it's just that one these middle ones i guess they catch a lot of wind see how they are let this thing focus see how that that middle one's bent so you gotta get on there and push it back i guess they flop and then the bottoms are all crooked i think um iowa 80 or whoever it is makes the different channel that go on the bottom but anyway then we'll get these air tabs off here one day and they get that all cleaned up but there she is uh, let's go get this video rendered. I just want to clear that up about that. I wasn't speeding going through Chattanooga. It looks like I'm driving, but I'm just trying to get away from the idiots, I guess. Maintain the speed limit. Not using my driving style, so just thought I'd clear that up. See ya. What a fun day already. I should have videoed every single bit of it. Holy mackerel. Well, we got this morning we waited until uh, 8.30 to leave the house. Well, actually we had to wait until 8.30 for the post office to open. I now have this uh, really cool app. It's called Informed Delivery. So whenever the post office gets my mail, they scan it and it shoots me an email of what is going to be in my mailbox. I've been waiting on that. Uh, waiting on. I was actually waiting on three Landstar checks. One was there Wednesday when I got home. One arrived uh, Saturday morning, and then the other one showed arriving today. Uh, the one, the one that came Saturday was like sixteen fifty. The one that came today was like seventeen fifty. So I really wanted those checks. Give me some good fuel money and go to Vegas and back, right? Among other things. Truck insurance is due. Blah, blah. So I uh, hung out until the post office opened and I went and got my mail. And uh, took a picture of the check. Deposited it that way. We'll see what happens. Here we are in the middle lane truck network. Uh, ain't nobody behind us. Don't worry. <coughs> so... Went in there and got 
got in there with a pilot at actually 328. The funny thing is, this load that I picked up going to Vegas, it picked up exactly one mile. I don't even think it's a mile from where I unloaded on Wednesday. So if I had a deadhead at home and deadhead at back, my deadhead would have been one mile. But you know, I unloaded down there, down there Wednesday morning. I, well, I, well, I took the trailer back to him Wednesday morning. And I went home. Today's Monday, so I went home. So, hadn't been for going home, I would have had uh, that in a one mile. That's what I love about this new uh, DAT board and whatnot. My dead head is like really low. It's crazy. Well, anyway, I got down there to pilot to 328. I always fuel up at TA or Petro. I get really good discounts with my nasty fuel card at those locations. When I say really good, good, really good discounts, for you Landstar guys, it is within two or three pennies of what your discount is through LCAP. The uh, fuel discounts are phenomenal. One guy left a comment on my YouTube channel about having your own authority. Is it worth it? You got more expenses. Your insurance cost is higher. You don't get the fuel discounts. You don't get the tire discount. That's why people like him need to stay company or leased to a company. You know, I mean, having your own authority isn't for everybody. But I got news for the guy there, dude, or I wish I wrote down your name. I got news for you, buddy. As I mentioned in the video, my insurance cost only went up four hundred dollars. I think if I if I was to take back the the uh, Workman's Cobb, it might be like around 270. I need to run those numbers again. So my insurance cost did not go up that much compared to what I had the way I had everything before. So one load covers that, man. I mean, if you can't see that, well, I'm, dude, I'm sorry, you know. Like I said, this job, this isn't for everybody, right? But don't be knocking what I got going on, because what I got going on, I got it going on. Come on. But anyway, we uh, got off on a little uh, rant there, didn't we? A little Terra, Terra, uh, I don't know. Anyway, so we got there to the pilot to 328. Went to use our card at the 328. And uh, it was declined. I had not had that happen yet, so I'm like, okay. And I was on my red light was on. I was out of fuel. I was only one mile from the customer, but I didn't know what kind of terrain they had, and I just didn't want to push it. You know, I mean, I was there, the red light had already been on since before I hit my driveway, Wednesday. Let me turn that volume on that thing down. I keep forgetting that thing's loud as it can be. So uh, this plate Mercedes has been a thorn in my butt for the last. 20 miles. Uh, yeah, so I've never, it was declined. I've never had that happen before. But like I said, I, my fuel light was on, a bit on since Wednesday when I took the truck home. I didn't want to fuel it before I put it in the driveway because I parked it for five days. But no use in buying fuel for it to sit in the driveway. That's about 600 bucks. I just keep my bank account right. My grandmother grew up in the Great, Great Depression. She taught me to save your money till the bill's due. Don't let them have your money early. I don't pay bills late, I pay bills early, you know, a few days. They get their bills on time, but I'm not gonna pay a bill a month early. I keep that money in my bank account, let it draw whatever interest. Kinda like the government uses your money, you know, they don't get blah, blah, blah. Anyway, well, the way they're walking, Shepard, I got to go. Um, so I get there, the card was declined, I'm totally out of fuel, I'm on fumes, I didn't want to risk it, even though I'm only a mile from the customer, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to mess with, uh, that's it, Mr. Shepard, I wasn't going to mess with it, so I used my debit card, got 250 bucks in fuel and the EF fluid, and hopefully it'll get me on up the road, Schneider, you middle lane truck driver, Unbelievable, wasn't no walking shipper, Snyder. 
Uh, anyway. So I used my debit card, got some fuel, and uh, that should get me up here to a T8. So I get my uh, maximum discounts on my fuel. I look out there with this little Honda. You can already tell how some people are, and then look at this little Toyota right up here, right up here ahead of us. Doing like, oh, that's a Chevrolet. Oh, it's a Dodge. I can't even tell my car's part. You're doing like five miles an hour. Well, anyways, I used my debit card. Got to the place there about 9.45 to pick up the load, and I was there until uh, 1.30. It turned out to be Rosa Carpet. I should have, and I really thought I'd cancel it. After they first put the first 10 loads on there, I thought, you know what? But I, I don't I don't like to operate that way. I, I've never, I don't like, I don't think I've ever dumped a load on an agent. Much less after I've gotten one halfway loaded. Like the one has been loaded to dump it, you know? JB Hunt, you gonna stay over there, bud? So, I uh, went and kept it, added straps in between the rows, the layers of rows to kind of pull the walls in. I got logistics posts on this thing, which are 12 inch centers. Uh, so it's a fairly well built trailer. So hopefully the walls won't continue to bulge out as this carpet settles. But it has bowed the walls out a little bit. So I am concerned about it. It's decent money load. It's going a long ways. And uh, I just didn't feel like dumping it on the agent. So we got it loaded, went over and scaled it. Scaled out okay. Uh, so we are on our way to Vegas as a carpet hauler. So hopefully the trailer survives and it uh, doesn't permanently bow it out. Hopefully it doesn't stretch it beyond. I don't want a trailer that looks like it's pregnant, you know. So does we'll just sell it so anyway we are on our way to Vegas now found a load coming out of Vegas <coughs> I got choked up up going all the way to Maryville Tennessee which we're putting back at the house for the weekend well it wouldn't have been a weekend well it took me back by the house and uh, but it turned out to be a load of tequila First, it was high value. They wanted two hundred thousand dollar cargo insurance, which is no big deal. I, I can call and add that. I think it's like twenty or forty bucks, it ain't much, to add to cargo insurance. Um, and then um, what turned out to be tequila. I said, no, nah, I think I'm pretty. I think I need liquor license for that. Probably didn't through the states I ran because I know you need like what Kentucky. Uh, New York. I don't know what. I don't know if ever said need a liquor license, liquor permit. But I, I just wasn't gonna mess with it. Not for the rate they were paying. I probably could negotiate a higher rate because uh, I never even got into the negotiation part. But I just wasn't going to uh, mess with the load of tequila. So it's only Monday. We will uh, find one coming out of Vegas. No worries. I've gotten like 10 load alerts already today. So, uh, yeah, loads are popping. We, we, we will find one. But anyway, so there's the update on that. We got loaded and uh, we are going west. So, see you out west. Well, I ain't never... I got nothing. I don't know why I turned the camera on. I got nothing. Nothing going on. Nothing happening. 
just riding across. Where are we at? New Mexico? Yeah, we're in New Mexico. Just out here riding around. Burning some high dollar fuel. At a high rate of fuel consumption. Yeah, seriously, I mean, the fuel is expensive and uh, uh, strong headwinds. So we're sucking it down, man. And we don't care. <clears throat> Come on, Shelly Truck. Because some of these people don't know how to merge. Watch, I'm going to make you get on the gas. There you go, get on the gas. Idiots. Well, at least they waved at me, right? You're welcome. I didn't do anything. <laughs> I don't know why they waited to me. Yeah, so today is Wednesday. I am, uh, if you ask the co pilot, which is the truck's navigation device, I am 590 miles away from Las Vegas, Nevada. If you ask that piece of crap, Rand McNally TNT Tablet 70, we are 845 miles away from Las Vegas. Because it takes you all the way to exit one in California to the 15 and brings you back to Vegas. I guess it doesn't think that you can get off in Kingman, Arizona and run up 93 to Vegas. And the thing's brand new. You're you gonna say, oh, it needs an update. Because, and it may need an update, but I. I'm pretty sure I checked it for an update two weeks ago and it said it was up to date. So I don't know. Because now we got that big, nice, fancy bridge. Uh, you no longer have to go across the Hoover Dam. Of course, they stopped trucks from going across the Hoover Dam a long time ago. But now they got that fancy bridge. So, I don't know what its problem is. But anyway, so we don't have a load lined up coming out of Vegas yet, so I'm getting a little concerned. Well, I'm not even looking for a load till Friday. We're gonna get up there and unload tomorrow, but we're gonna fall probably about 250 miles short of making it today. Uh, we'll get up early, because we'll be able to get up early and drive on into Vegas and make that delivery, but I'm not even going to try to pick anything up on Thursday. You know, I could probably be up there and be unloaded by noon. You're going to stay over there, Jeep, because you got your own lane. A lot of people can't get on. It's been around here 75. I am doing 68. And these people cannot get on the interstate at a decent speed. Uh, so, even though we We'll probably be way early in Vegas. I'm going to guess uh, way before noon to get unloaded. But I don't want to risk it. You know, I got rows of carpet on here, which really ticks me off. And that's going to probably take a couple of hours to unload. So, and plus, I'm going to start to eat logs at 3 or 4 in the morning. I just, I'd rather really just unload it, go to the Wild West truck stop. I'm just going to stay here in middle lane, man. Traffic's light behind me. And uh, I notice that Jeep's gone now, right? Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to go unload it tomorrow. And then go to the Wild West and uh, hang out. I uh, hope, hope I go. To, that's the plan, anyway. Unless we book a load for Friday that's not Vegas. And we got a deadhead toward dirt somewhere to get it, but there's a lot of loads popping out of Vegas. Just nothing I really want to do. Most of them going to California or Chicago area or New Jersey or Pennsylvania. So there's a lot of good loads. Um, just nothing I want to do. I don't want to pick a California load that delivers Monday that picks up Friday, you know. And most of them pick up Thursday to deliver Friday, and I don't, I don't want to risk it with the hours. So I'd really kick back, relax, pick one up on Friday, and, and run all weekend with it. And hopefully, 
if that works out, I can stop at Keeneland, Arizona, but come back out that way and uh, get some polishing done to the truck. So I'm hoping to book a load today, and that way I can plan and I can contact Shine A Truck guys and say, hey, I'd like to be there Saturday morning, blah, blah, blah. This is what I want done. Can you get me in? Even though it's a little early in the year because you still got snow junk going on back east. And I might get wrapped up in it, you know. But I don't know that I'll be coming back out here before the truck show in Louisville, Kentucky. So I'd like to get her shined up. Uh, no, uh, I'm not putting this thing in the show. I never will put this thing in the show. It's not show quality material. Yes, you guys think, think it's clean and it's pretty, but it is not clean enough for show for a working class truck. It's not. I'm not going to do all that work and clean it. I, I used to do the show circuit as a kid with a with I had a really nice car, but I was in the click, you know, and and and, and those things are just rigged. So I mean, you look at Chris's truck. His truck is immaculate. If you ask Chris, it's not, but it, it, he, he he washes his engine. I mean, he keeps his truck clean, you know. And, and he put his truck in a Wildwood truck show. Spent several weeks and several hours detailing and getting everything uh, up to par. I mean, and I I didn't see it, but I, I mean, I seen pictures of it, and I. I think he placed it. I don't know if he placed second or third, but I think he might have placed. Uh, uh, but he should have won, you know. And uh, but yeah, so it's just show circuits, man. It's just a rigged. Uh, you got to be in the click. You got to be in the circle, you know. And I'm not in the circle, and I don't. I'll never be in the circle. So you know, don't go. So don't go to blowing up the comments. Oh, you need to show it. Blah, blah. Ain't happening. I look pretty going in the highway, and that's it. I'm one of those vehicles that look good from a distance. You, know, you take a picture of a used car, and it looks good in a picture. But anyway, so there's your ramblings for this morning. Just waiting on my phone to ring with a load. So far, it has not. One of our old men. Weird uh, porcupine stand by the rocks. Anyway, I wish this flying Jay over here, Albuquerque, still had the uh, magic dragon in there. You know, back when flying Jay was flying Jay, they, they had a magic dragon. The pizza parlor and a real restaurant. And uh, the Magic Dragon, I like it pretty well. I mean, some of the stuff had too much onion in it, in it but it, it, it was, you know, easy to acquire Chinese food out here on the road, you know. And then they took them out, you know, and pilot bought them. Or they take the mag magic dragons out after pilot bottom. I don't know. They took all the restaurants out, you know. Put them stinking dinnies in there. And truck stops have changed, have they not? I remember back in the day, you go to the Fly J restaurant and you get, you get the chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes and holy mackerel, that big oval platter they served it on. It was, the chicken fried steak was as big as that platter and then you got two giant scoops of mashed potato about the size of a soup bowl and it, I'd eat half of it you know and get the other half to go and it would take still take up the entire styrofoam container you know and I'd throw that in the refrigerator and eat that the next day man uh 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 that iron skillet. Of course, iron still, skillet's still good. But man, they had a few selections across the country that was iron skillet's just 
really good. We used to get beef tips and rice on the menu and I don't think they had beef tips and rice. Anyway, I don't eat out anymore. I, I used to eat all the time and now primarily eat out of the truck. It's very rare that I eat, eat out maybe, maybe once a week or something, you know. I'll uh, eat out. Because I'll buy my chicken biscuits, uh, throw in the refrigerator, microwave one of them every morning. I eat a ham and turkey sandwich every day for lunch, man. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty basic. So we knew it. So uh, that's about all I got, I reckon. It is 8.45 in the morning over here, so I guess we're gonna get into some rush hour traffic. So let's go focus on what we're doing. I guess somebody threw a cigarette out. It's like it started in a media, jump, jump the media. And it's dry out here, man. Uh uh uh. Get out there and stomp it out, but I just had my shower this morning. I don't know, it looks like it's uh, down here too. It looks like my space deliberately set, set it. I don't know why it would. Uh, what do y'all think? You think somebody deliberately set the fires? Because it's in the spots, like right, right there. And then here, here. That's what it looks like to me. Someone is deliberately setting the fires. So if we see a car on the side of the road, we're going to take them out. Five mile an hour 
truck in the left lane at 75 mile an hour zone. I'll show y'all how to do this, okay? Y'all ready? Come on, four wheelers. Let's show these guys how to pass a big truck. This right here is the way it's done, gentlemen. If you can't pass at a respectable speed, then keep your butt in the right lane. I mean, oh, he's sitting there eating his potato chips. Talking on the telephone, come on. That's, ladies and gentlemen, is how you pass someone. You don't sit there and lollygag a half a mile an hour faster than the other guy. Uh uh uh. If you can't do it, don't do it. Simple as that. Over and out. Lesson for the day. See ya. Last another day. Who am I kidding? Anyway, I still do not have a low out of Vegas yet. I think it's 11:45 a.m. Vegas time. I think that's right. Let's see. 14:45 Eastern. Yeah, I've, I'm in Vegas time zone now, but my clocks have not switched over. I think uh, when I crossed the state line, it said entering, changing times. So, but whatever. I don't know if Nevada and Arizona same time or not, but uh, it's still early yet. Today's just Wednesday. I don't really technically unload till Thursday. I don't really want to load till Friday, so I'm not full blown panic yet. I am nervous. There's loads popping out of there like crazy. The loads that I have wanted going to like Ohio or North Carolina have been uh, TQL. I, I just refuse, you know. Just not quite ready to go down that rabbit hole yet. Oh, look at that first fleet truck that was taking forever to pass. The other first fleet truck just got off that exit back there. Crazy, man. He could have backed out of it a half a mile for a couple miles. I mean, that's just bloody ridiculous. So when he got off that ramp, the guy with the rolling door, had to get out of the right lane in the left lane because the guy that passed him was stupid, you know what I mean? Stupid. Anyway, wide open desert. Can't we just get along? So, yeah, I'm just not ready to do the TQL route yet. I got your carrier packet in the truck. I just have never filled it out. Some guy asked me what a carrier packet was. Well, a carrier packet's all their list of rules and regulations and guidelines for hauling their freight. Got to initial all these different pages. Fill out the W-9 form and the bank rate information, how you want to get paid, and your company information, and insurance information and blah 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 maybe I'll show you guys one day so anyway there's that and uh, we're just going to keep trucking we got e-log says we got three and a half hours to go it's 11.45 somewhere so that means we'll be stopped about 15.30 today at Dallas Center. The problem is that puts me halfway between Flagstaff and Kingman. And there's just nothing there. Nothing. I got a really old truck stop book too, so I don't know if they've added a new pilot down there somewhere. I think it might be a flag that they've added a new pilot. Or loves, whatever it is. So I need something halfway between uh, Flagstaff and uh, Kingman. So, we'll go look. Indeed. I hope we miss the rain, man. My truck's clean. Alright, I'm just rambling. Get out of here. Okay, so that was an abrupt end of that video because it's an hour long video. So it'll be two parts. The trip to Vegas will be in two parts. So I'll work on part two. It'll be out in a few days. 
get this part one going and uh, get that uploaded for you so thanks for watching give me a thumbs up like subscribe hit the little bell um, and we'll catch you on the next video look for the tab up in the right corner there is it just corner that corner for um, the link to part two it won't if you're watching this the week it came out it won't be there but after next week I, when I upload part two the tab will be there so if you see the tab click it uh, too confusing okay bye